Hello and welcome to the disgraceful mess that's otherwise known as Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. In today's episode, I'm going to make an inverter. Kind of like the one I've made here. Because, well, I'm shooting this intro after I made the thing. So anyway, yes, I'm going to make an inverter that's kind of like this. Except much better because my one's going to be a switch mode type. But I'm going to keep it simple so that almost anybody can still build it. So anyway, let's get on and build this thing. An inverter is something that takes a voltage from a battery, usually 12 volts, and steps it up to AC mains voltage. So, I got a battery here. Yes, that's how you spell it, because that's how I say it. And that powers an oscillator and an amplifier. So this oscillator puts out the AC mains waveform, and then this amplifier steps it up a little, and then this transformer transforms it from 12 volts to whatever your mains voltage is. So I was thinking of using something really simple to do the oscillation, such as a triple five timer, and have a full bridge output stage. Now the only trouble with this is that, well, since it's going to be working at 50 or 60 hertz, a gate drive transformer like this is just really going to be out of the question. These do not work at those kind of frequencies. So how am I going to drive the MOSFET gates at this low frequency so we get push-pull output? Well, some people who are just getting into electronics might come up with something like this, which really is just not going to work. This is an absolutely terrible circuit. Now, let me just give you a little walkthrough so you can see what's going on. We've got an oscillator here, putting out a square wave. And that's going into this MOSFET here, and this MOSFET here. And we've also got a little inverting circuit there. So we get the opposite of this on this MOSFET here, and this MOSFET here. So when these two are on, these two will be off, and vice versa. So we should get an alternating current through the coil. And yeah, it's going to work, but it's not going to work too well. You're not going to get the full 12 volts across the primary. And these two MOSFETs here are going to get pretty hot pretty easily. Okay, so what you can see here is a simplified version of the circuit. This is the full bridge with the other two MOSFETs taken out, just for simplicity. Anyway, we've got the two MOSFETs, there's the coil, there's the square wave generator, and there's the inverting circuit to provide the opposite of whatever this is doing to this MOSFET. And what determines whether a MOSFET is going to be on, off, or whatever, is the voltage between the source and the gate. So. As you can see, the square wave pulse generator is connected directly to this MOSFET's gate, and the source is connected to this thing's ground, because, as you can see, the source is connected to ground, and this is also connected to ground. So, this MOSFET here is going to have no trouble switching on or off with each pulse. So, with each pulse, this will come on fully, and fully conduct, and there'll be no problem. It'll be pretty happy with that, and it can... You know, as long as the current's not too much, it can take that all day. The top MOSFET, however, is a completely different story. It's connected differently, and all kinds of magic and mumbo-jumbo happens when you do it like this. So as you can see, the source is not connected to ground. So it's not going to get the full voltage it needs to fully turn on. So let's say this is 12 volts right here going into the gate. The voltage we'll actually get coming out of the source is going to be whatever voltage we're trying to supply the gate with, minus the voltage that it takes to turn the transistor on, which is, in this case, about 3 volts, minus an additional 0.5 volts, so that's 12, minus 3, minus an additional 0.5, and we get you know, only about 8.5 volts. So there's quite a substantial drop across the MOSFET, and it doesn't matter what your supply voltage is. This could be 12 volts, this could be 25 volts, this could be 50 volts, this could even be 200 volts. The voltage you get out is going to be this, what I just mentioned right here. So, it's a terrible way to connect up your MOSFETs. So, here's the circuit that I've come up with. As you can see, just by adding a few ordinary components, we've transformed a circuit that doesn't work into a circuit that does work, and that also eliminates the need to invert the signal for this MOSFET here, but we will have to invert the signal for the other side of the full bridge, but that's neither here nor there, so how does this circuit work? 
Well, let's assume that the circuit's powered up and this capacitor is charged up to the 12 volts that it's being supplied with, you know, and it's all up and working. So what happens when we get a pulse from the square wave generator? This MOSFET fully turns on, so it's pretty much just like a piece of wire at this state. So this one is on and this one gets turned off because the gate of this one effectively gets shorted to ground because as you can see the gate is connected here and it goes along here to the drain of this MOSFET and when this MOSFET is on this one will be turned off because the gate voltage at the upper MOSFET gets pulled down to zero and when the output from this oscillator goes low so this MOSFET turns off this one turns on again because the gate is no longer being shorted out and this capacitor here one side of the capacitor is connected to the source and if we follow the other end it goes up here into this resistor and then into this resistor and into the gate so the gate gets the full 12 volts and this MOSFET turns fully on and everything works both MOSFETs are happy and we get 12 volts across the coil in both directions. Well, we will when the other two MOSFETs are there, but it's enough waffling on. I think it's time for a few practical demonstrations. I've got a little circuit set up here with a MOSFET and a light bulb and obviously a couple of meters and a power supply. And this is the configuration that the MOSFET is in at the moment. Hopefully you can see that. So I've got the bulb and the MOSFET. And right here, if the camera would focus, is where I'm going to connect a battery to turn the MOSFET on. So I'm essentially connecting the battery between the ground and the gate. Got this meter measuring the voltage across the bulb and this meter is going to be measuring the power supply voltage. So I'll plug this in. It might even come on a little bit. Okay, let me just discharge the gate there. So we've got 15 volts. I know it says minus 15 volts but I just had to connect this meter back to front just so I don't have all the test leads going all over the place but anyway so I'm going to take this battery here so I'm connecting the battery's negative to the ground which is also connected to the source I'm putting the battery's positive on the gate there we go and as you can see the light comes on and we've got about 15 volts going into the light and yeah and of course the line is going to stay on until I discharge the gate because, you know, like I mentioned in a previous video, MOSFETs can store the charge on the gate. So, uh, yeah, even though that was just 9 volts we're using to turn on the MOSFET, as you can see, it's on and it's fully conducting. So, I'll just discharge the gate. There we go. And now we'll move on to configuration number 2. So anyway, the MOSFET is connected in this configuration now with the bulb at the bottom and the MOSFET at the top connected to the 12 volt supply. Well, it's 15 volts actually, but I made those schematics when I thought this was a 12 volt supply. Okay, so here's a little circuit. And I'm going to connect the battery to the circuit's ground and hopefully my hands won't get in the way this time. So battery is connected to the circuit's ground and I'm going to connect the battery's positive to the MOSFET's gate. And as you can see, the bulb barely comes on at all. We still got 15 volt supply. That's why this meter's here. So you can see the supply voltage has not changed. And I'm not BSing anybody. But we've only got 5.5 volts going through the bulb. Anyway, hopefully without my hands getting in the way again, I'm, gonna, I'm now going to connect the batteries negative to the MOSFET's source this time. And again, connect the batteries positive to the gate. And voila! Let there be light. As you can see, the bulb is now on nice and bright. And we've got the full 15 volts going through it. Okay, so now I've built up this circuit here. Hopefully that you can see it. This circuit here, it's pretty much exactly what we've got here. Except, of course, instead of a coil here, I've got a light bulb and one end of the light bulb is connected there and the other end is connected to ground and standing in for the square wave oscillator the little triple five timer and of course over here is the circuit itself with a couple of MOSFETs and all the necessary, cir all the necessary circuitry to make it work 
bit difficult to see the other MOSFETs. Yeah, you can just about see it there. So, anyway, let's turn the circuit on. Alright, there we go. So, this meter is measuring the voltage that's going into this circuit. This meter is measuring the voltage going into the triple five timer and also the voltage that's going into the diode and if we go over to the oscilloscope you can see that we are getting about 20 volts out of the circuit so I've got this on 5 volts per division so that's 5, 10, 15 and just over 20 right there the voltage going into this little circuit is also what we're getting out and I can just prove that by adjusting the voltage going in so reducing the voltage there as you can see it's they're going up and down in step so if I put that onto about 10 volts you can see we've got about 10 volts at the scope and well almost 10 volts on the meter there and I can go all the way up to 23 volts as you can see got 23 volts going into the circuit and we've got 23 volts approximately coming out okay so I'm now going to adjust the voltage going into this diode which is this part right here and also the triple five which is this bit right here as I adjust this you can see it makes almost well it doesn't make any difference whatsoever so let's go down to about six volts so that's six volts going into the triple five and six volts going into the diode and you can see it's still holding up pretty well in fact it's made absolutely no difference whatsoever although if I go down too far it will start getting a bit weird as you can see so it cannot keep up anymore that's only about 4.2 volts nice thing is you could use different voltages here and here you don't have to keep these two voltages the same so um, ideally you want to keep them the same but it will work from unbalanced voltages so I'm just going to go and prove that right now okay so I've got the 9 volt battery connected here well connected between here and the ground the triple five timer is still operating off the variable voltage power supply and obviously this is still working off the other variable voltage supply so I can still adjust these two independently so we've got unbalanced voltages going into the circuit so that's about 9 volts going in here and about almost 14 volts going in here and as you can see the circuit still works I could lower this all the way down to 6 volts and it still doesn't make any difference but I need to go all the way down to about to about 4 volts, no, to actually to about 3.5 volts to, until it starts playing up so now we know that all works so let's see if we can make an inverter alright so a little bit later on and I've got stuff on the table so what is all this stuff then well this is the full bridge output stage this is the driver circuit or the, the oscillator circuit rather with a 741 I mean with a triple five timer doing the square wave and then there's these two chips providing the inverted and non-inverted outputs this one's a UCC37321 and this one's a UCC37322 and I've got that hooked up to the scope right now unfortunately the camera's refresh rate and the refresh rate of the scope don't really agree with each other so you cannot really see the scope all that well but just to show you that this little circuit is working put the battery on here and as you can see hopefully well you cannot really see it but we have an inverted square wave there and a square wave there and we're just waiting for the energy from the capacitors to drain out it's going to take forever so this is the oscillator with variable frequency control so it can go from about 40 hertz to about 65 hertz and this is the transformer I'm going to be using I tested this and the output on the secondary I got was about 17 volts so it might be a little bit too uh, so it might be a little bit too high for this 
because I'm going to put 12 volts into there and hopefully get 240 volts out of here. And these are a couple of capacitors that are going to be used to connect this to that. So, I'm going to wire this all up and see if it works. Alright then, I guess it's time for first light. So I've got the oscillator connected up to the full bridge output. I've got this meter measuring the current going into the circuit and this meter measuring the output from the transformer. So, turn this on and hopefully it'll work. Ah, that's working pretty good. We're getting about 211 volts out, so... The fact that it's actually working first time when I turn it on, even though I haven't used the ideal transformer, is... That's a pretty good sign. Now, let's see if we can do something with this, like light a light bulb or something. I've got pretty much every doubt that my homemade power supply is going to be able to provide enough juice for this thing to light the bulb. But if it comes on even half as bright as it normally would, I will be amazed. So let's see what it gets. Oh, it came on. It's drawing about 205 milliamps. It seems quite flickery though, which is kind of weird. I'm actually quite surprised that we got any light out of that at all. Let's just see how much that's pulling the voltage down. Yeah, it does pull the voltage down quite a bit. We're only getting 10 volts going in. We're pretty much at the very limit of my power supply right here. So let's try a CFL. So this only takes about... This only takes about a sixth of the amount of power that this does. So this should come on much brighter, so let's see. And it's not coming on at all. It's kind of weird. And we're getting 13 volts going in. 82 milliamps. I'm no lighter than CFL. It's weird. Got a duff one here or something? Nope, that's just refusing to come on. You can hear the transformer buzzing, but that's about it. Now I've had a, um, a thingy, an idea, that's it. I noticed the transformer was making a very strange noise as if it was turning on and off really quickly. So I decided to use a 9 volt battery to power this circuit here and power the rest on 12 volt power supply. And let me just plug the battery back in. To on, and hopefully, we'll hear that now the transformer is making a much more. Well, you might be able to hear it. The transformer is making a much more suitable noise. So I'm going to try with the other bulb again. See if it comes on more steadily. I told you it was flickering. Don't want to break the bulb. Okay, let's see what we get now. That seems more reasonable. Well, I think it's about time we ramp this up. Connected this to a power supply connected this to a power supply that can provide the juice. Just before we do that though, I'm just curious about the waveform I get out of this transformer. I want to see if it smooths it at all or if it still appears to be square, so I've got my, skills, my oscilloscope hooked up through a voltage divider, of course. A one kilo ohm I mean, a one mega ohm resistor here and a one kilo ohm resistor across the scope's input. So the input will not so the voltage will not blow the scope. Okay, I'll turn the battery back in. Go on in there. 
there's our waveform, and uh, you cannot really see it on the camera, but that actually still looks pretty square. I was wondering if the transformer would smooth it out into more of a sine wave, or if it would still be square, but as you can see there, that's what we got right there. Alright, so, change the power supply. So this time, standing in for the battery, instead of my own homemade power supply, we've got this 12 volt switch mode power supply, which I think I actually modified for 12.6 volt operation, but here's our battery. Turns on, hopefully it works. Mm -hmm. I can hear the transformer humming, and we're getting 12 volts going in. Drawing about 300, drawing about 32 milliamps, which is pretty good. Anyway, let's see if we can light a light bulb. Much better. We're drawing about 276 milliamps. And that's holding the voltage nice and good. I'll turn it off though before the bulb burns a hole in my bench. And yeah, I would say that's a successful experiment. So if you want to make your own homemade inverter, this is one way you can do it. And of course, what kind of psycho would I be if I didn't give you a schematic diagram? So here it is, for your viewing pleasure. So we've got the output stage here, and then there's the oscillator right here. Actually, come to think of it, I could have just in the schematic connected that there and that there, but eh, doesn't matter, that's where they go anyway, so um, there it is. I would not suggest removing any of the diodes. These four diodes here, that's this one, this one, this one, and this one, have to be left in the you might be able to get away with removing those two diodes. They're just to protect the MOSFETs from any reverse voltage spikes. These diodes, if you remove any of those and replace them with a straight piece of wire, the circuit won't work. There's our output transformer there. The low voltage side here and the high voltage side there. And a couple of back-to-back -back capacitors to make sure only AC gets into the transformer. And of course, this is the oscillator circuit here. The triple five timer. This is to adjust the frequency, so you can adjust it to 50 or 60 hertz, depending on what your mains frequency is. Yeah, it's probably better to power this off a separate power supply to this, so, you know, you could put a 9 volt battery here, and this is where your main 12 volt battery would go, because, as you noticed, there was a little bit of a problem with some parasitic oscillation. I hoped all the decoupling with all these capacitors here would fix that, but it didn't seem to. Although, maybe... It was just because my power supply I was using in the first place was too weak. It might actually even work. So what I'm going to do now is connect all this up to the same 12 volt power supply and see if that works. And anyway, there you go. There's how to make an inverter. Now I've got this running on a more suitable power supply. I've taken out the 9 volt battery, so everything is now connected up to this single supply here. So. Let's switch it on and see if it works. Lovely. Well, just a little update. I've managed to fix the compact fluorescent light now, so... There it goes. And that is putting out quite a bit of light. Of course, that will put out a lot more light once it's, once it's warmed up, but there we go. So there is my homemade inverter. And that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye. Because it's annoying when the camera keeps going. I farted. It's annoying when the camera keeps going. Like this all the time, and you're trying to watch my videos. People would not believe the amount of trouble I have to go through making a Cool Dude Clem video. They think I just stick the camera on and that's it. I'm, you know, I'm filming away, but that's not the case. Gosh, been a while, isn't it, chaps? I think we better make a video. 
Actually, I'm just testing this in my photonic induction voice, making sure it's work. And it seems. And anyway, there you go. There's how to make an inductor. I mean, an inverter. This is what takes up about 20% of all my videos, getting the camera adjusted so you can see what's going on. This is what takes up about 20% of my videos so you can see what's going on. I'm trying to stay a little kid and not do man sneezes. I'm trying to stay a little kid just doing little kid sneezes. It's just good. So this should come on much brighter, so let's see. I popped it. So let's see what it gets. Well, it came on.